you want to smell good on a spring night just come back and watch this video and pick one of these perfumes if you're going out on a hot summer day and you're going to launch poolside at the w you could find this video because you're going to want to know what you want to smell like <laughs> Hey sugar, it's Ro the Black Magnolia, your favorite bougie babe, bringing you all your bougie but budget-friendly tips and faves and a little bit of everything in between. It is time for spring and summer perfume season. If you have not started to build your fragrance library for the spring and summer season yet, now is the time to get started. Let's get into all of my favorites that you need to add to your perfume library the right way. Now, if you're new here, you may not know this about me, but I love to smell good. I mean, who doesn't love to smell good? We all love to smell good, but I have a thing for perfume and I do perfume reviews from time to time and it is spring and summer perfume season and it is time for a review. Are you ready? We're starting with the J'adore Parfum d'eau. This here is divine. You're getting ready for an event, someplace special that you're going. You've had your makeup done. You are getting your hair curled. You're putting on the perfect light pink lip and somebody is helping strap your Manolo Blahnik to your foot and your pulling out the pin curls from your hair and just fluffing it out just a little bit and you spray this on. That's what this perfume feels like to me. This perfume, I have an old school love affair with this one. Well, so I wore the original J'adore for probably five straight years. It was one of my very, very favorite perfumes. The fragrance was just, it was lovely. It was just a very sexy, put together perfume. You probably remember Charlize Theron was in all of the commercials and doing all the things with all the gold and all the stuff. But then I had a friend who decided that they were going to wear the perfume, like bathe in it. So I had to stop wearing it. I had the perfume and the lotion and it was just, it was too much. You know when somebody likes what you smell like and then all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, I'm going to get it. And they get it and they don't, it doesn't work for them. Yeah, that happened. So I stopped wearing it and I've kind of steered clear of J'adore for a very long time. But when we smelled this, the other day, I knew I had to add it to my collection. So we're gonna get into the notes. Rose, neroli, jasmine, magnolia, honeysuckle, and green florals. Such a beautiful combination. This is a fruity, citrus, white floral forward, green leaning perfume. It is so light and soft and fresh. And you know, the girls on Fragrantica are not kind. They do not care. They will read a perfume for filth immediately. No one has anything bad to say about this perfume from what I have been able to see. You know that this is the one. one. 1.7 ounces is gonna cost you anywhere between 100 to $150 at most retailers, but it is worth every penny. Now onto our next one, Ocean de Joya by Armani. I love this fragrance. It is girls night out. This is first date. I would describe this one as simple luxury. This is a no fuss, no frills, beautiful, straightforward fragrance. It's warm. It's a little bit more bottom heavy. It's not as bright as most perfumes that I would recommend usually for a spring summer, but it's kind of marshmallowy and warm, but not woody. Let me give you the notes and you'll see what I'm talking about. We've got pear, citrus, lily of the valley, water jasmine, rose, green floral, salt, musk, and sandalwood. And that musk and that sandalwood are what allow this fragrance to transition into less of a bright green white floral and more of a sexy marshmallowy kind of a smell. This retails for about $125 at most stores and you can always find it on perfume.net or fragrance.net. So this video is not sponsored and I'm not telling you to go and get your perfume anywhere. I'm just telling you where you could possibly go and get these perfumes at a little bit less of a price, but the typical retail on this is going to be about $125. This is the perfect perfume for a warm spring afternoon, a warm summer afternoon that transitions beautifully into an evening scent. So let's say lunch turns into dinner that turns into a late night and you smell like this, you'll be just fine. Now the complaints that some people have about this is, is that it dries down and smells really soapy, but I think that that is really dependent on your body chemistry. My daughter wears this and can I tell you, it smells like her, it just smells, like second skin. If it works with your body chemistry, it is phenomenal. If not, it's not gonna be a good experience. This is kind of one of those, love it or hate it, in the bottle or on the body. It's just not, 
there's no in between with this one i don't feel like and fragrantica the most of the reviews say about the same like it, you're either gonna love this perfume you're gonna hate it this is another green forward floral fragrance most of the spring and summer perfumes that i'm going to bring to you are going to be green forward because it's that time of year and our next fragrance is by an indie brand zadig and voltaire i adore this perfume my daughter wears this one all the time as well and it is a cult classic this is the zadig and voltaire this is her even the bottle, I love it. It's super minimalistic. It's very to the point. This is her. Do you want this perfume? If you don't, move on. 100 milliliters is gonna run you about $129. This perfume is really, really pretty. And it is also my granddaughter's very favorite. She loves it on her mommy because she says, mommy, it smells like you. And it is her because this is her. This is a sweet, woody, balsamic fragrance. And you wouldn't peg that for a spring scent, but it really does work as a warm or a hot weather fragrance. This was launched in 2016 and it's got some really interesting notes. Whipped cream, vanilla, chestnut, pink pepper, silkwood balsam, jasmine, samba, sandalwood, and cashmere wood. This perfume is the best of every single fragrance note that you could think of. So the House of Zadig and Voltaire is kind of this boho, casual, chic, French fashion house that prides itself in being not very fussy, but complex, if that makes sense. So you can get the This Is Her for yourself, and there is also a This Is Him. So the way that the brand put everything together, they wanted it to be kind of this dichotomy, this yin and yang of scents, to be able to combine and come together and make a beautiful fragrance symphony. Getting this for yourself only means that you have to go and get your significant other the other one if you want to, or you can both wear this one. Either way, fragrance is for everybody. So I feel like if you this like warm, nice, bright nice. white florals that lean marshmallowy and musky and a little tiny bit soapy, you are gonna love this Zadig and Voltaire, this is her. So this next one, I have been dying to get my perfumey little hands all over. I listen to a podcast called Scent World. If you haven't heard of it, you definitely should. The host, Marianne Machowski, runs communications for Scentbird. Scentbird isn't sponsoring this, but Scentbird, if you want to sponsor me, absolutely do so because I am a fragrance queen, bring it on. But she was interviewing Paul Reacts because he just came out a little while ago with his own fragrance called Miss Girl. And she was talking to him about what inspired him and kind of the things that he likes and what excited him and made him want to become a perfumer. And it was really just by accident. He kind of sent an email off and was like, hey, by the way, I love your perfume brand. Maybe we should collab. And they came back and said yes. And he created his own fragrance, Miss Girl. Now, I have not smelled that yet. It is on my list. But in their interview that they did, Marianne was talking about her friend who started a little fragrance line called Ellis Brooklyn and her friend named the perfume after her daughter and after the city that she lives in. There's a perfume in the Ellis Brooklyn line called Florist. The way that she described this fragrance, it gave me so much anxiety that I didn't have it in my closet and like I was I was freaking out. So I immediately went to Sephora and they didn't have it. Yeah, this is fantastic. So I did find at Sephora the Ellis Brooklyn sampler set. I had such FOMO over not being able to get this perfume. When I found the Discovery set, I near about passed out in the store. I'm like, do I, but I don't want any of the other perfumes. I just want the florist. But before I commit to it, let me just try the Discovery set. And just calm yourself down, calm yourself down. Get the Discovery set, spend the $35 and figure it out later, okay? The Discovery set includes salt, florist, myth, sweet, vanilla milk, super amber, bee, a play, and sunfruit. All of these sound like spring and summer fragrances. I'm thinking something named Florist is probably gonna be more of a springy and less of a wintry fragrance. I'm really excited to try it out and see what it's like. Before I actually smell it, let's get into the notes on this perfume. Bergamot, Lily of the Valley, Pear, Lemon, Gardenia, Tuberose, Jasmine Sombach, Honeysuckle, Australian Sandalwood, Ambroxian, Virginia Cedar, and Australian Sandalwood. That's a lot of things. So this fragrance is actually relatively new. It came out last year in 2023, and this is an ambery floral fragrance. The way that she described it was, it's like literally walking into a flower shop on a warm afternoon and just getting like the biggest inhale of all of your favorite white flowers. And I really wanna see if that's what this is giving because if it's ambery, is it really gonna be fresh and bright? I don't know, but we're gonna see. And what's that old quote by Lady Bird Johnson? She said, where flowers bloom, so does hope. So sometimes we could all use a little hope and I'm all about that. <laughs> so we're gonna smell this. Each of the perfumes have like a signature color to them. 
as you can see the florist is pink and then it just it aligns with the pink here then we've got myth it's black it's got kind of that gray sweet has a little bit of like that buttercup yellow it's just really well thought out and well put together and i'm really excited to smell all of these okay. all right so let's try florist <clears throat> i can taste it no 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 i don't like Maybe I'll like some of the other ones in the Ellis Brooklyn catalog a little bit better. It's, it smells like synthetic florals. It doesn't, oh God, no, I'm putting it back. It's not good. For $110, absolutely not. <laughs> My daughter calls it post locker room chic. Like the stuff that you spray on your body cause you don't want to stank but like mm -mm. it's very oh what is what is the what is it that i'm smelling the most here because whatever it is i don't like it and whoever said online that this was a good blind buy shame on you i feel like the lemon and the bergamot are fighting the white flowers in this in this fragrance they're like fighting for first position and it's not going well they're not letting the white flowers come through and be the star of the show. Because when you think florist, you don't think bergamot. You think gardenia, jasmine, all those things that are in this fragrance. But mm -mm. Like I get a quick whiff of the white flower in it and then it goes away. It's all bergamot and lemon. It's very citrusy and like literally every time I smell it, I can taste it and I don't want that. So what I'll do, I'm not gonna be too hasty. I'm gonna let this dry down a little bit. And then by the end of the video, we'll see if I'm still feeling a little gaggy over it and we'll go from there. But for $110, I would keep your money in your pocketbook. So the other fragrance in this Discovery set is Sweet. I didn't do a whole lot of research on this one, but I heard that it had notes of violet in it and I love anything violet. I love it. So I wanted to try this one to maybe give the brand an extra chance and not just be horrible to them because that would not be kind. This fragrance is also $110 and here are the notes. Pear, musk mallow, bergamot, orris, violet, heliotrope, marshmallow, white amber, and cashmere. That's a lot. And hopefully the violet and the heliotrope will be able to balance out some of those more bottom heavy, musky, woody, mallowy notes, but we'll see. Let's try it. I already love it. Like I haven't put it to my nose yet. And just the initial notes. It's diamonds, it's diamonds, diamonds, baby. Oh, that's pretty. Violet's either gonna go really stinky on you when you spray it on, or it's gonna be perfect. You're gonna either love it or you're gonna hate it. There's no in-between with Violet. Never smelled the Brooklyn Ellis before. I smelled a little bit of the heliotrope, but I'm smelling Violet and Marshmallow. And it smells very synthetic. Both the florist and this one smell very, very synthetic. It's almost like fragrance on plastic is what it smells like to me and I don't love that I like for a fragrance to smell real to smell what like the oil that it is like the oil that's in it I loved this at first like violet is just very powerful in this fragrance and I love that but it's the violet and the marshmallow together that I don't think like I, I initially that first spritz loved it like just having it in the room I think this would make a good candle it's, it smells like a less expensive version of Valentino. That's really what I'm getting of the Born in Roma. Like almost there, but not quite. I'm maybe going to do a little bit more research on the rest of the scents in here before I try any more and not dig any deeper for now. So for $110, I feel like you could do something else. Sorry. So this next one is Juliet Has a Gun. I typically steer clear of Juliet Has a Gun. I don't like the perfume. I don't like the line. I smell this. Oh my God. I was like, yeah, I'm, I need to take, I need to, I'm tripping all over myself even now, right? I was like, no, I need to try this fragrance and live in it a little bit and see if I like it as much over the next week or so as I do today before I actually dive in and spend my hard earned money on it. So, this is a yellow forward floral perfume. The yellow floral, coconut, ylang ylang, manoi, jasmine, bergamot, orange blossom, gardenia. Oh, it is all of my favorite florals. It also has vanilla, ambroxan, and white musk. 
I don't know if I'm saying that word right, but I'm calling it Ambroxian. I'm, if I'm saying it wrong, I'll figure it out. Correct me in the comments. I don't. All of the reviews on this perfume say it is tropical, great for hot, hot weather. Oh, so, okay, here's what I feel like this smells like. This smells like you had on sunscreen all day. You were by the pool sipping champagne in Saint Germain. You've gotten enough sun. You're done for the day. You get up, you go back to the room, you shower. You put on all of your lotions and all of the things. And this is what you spray on afterward to go to dinner on the beach or dinner on the rooftop that overlooks the ocean. That's what this smells like. It is so good. Like I typically, I'll smell a perfume and I'll go, oh, I really like that. And then I'll let it sit for a couple minutes. And then I'm like, oh God, no, I thought I liked that, but I don't like that. Kind of like with the last one. Wow. This is sexy. This is a sexy summer scent. If I'm gonna sweat, I wanna sweat Juliet has a gun, lust for sun. That's, this is what I want my sweat to smell like the entire summer. And so I think I'm gonna just have to make it a thing that I do to sweat Juliet has a gun, lust for sun all summer long. This is what I'll be sweating. So before we leave, let's smell the florist and see how it's dried down because it's been probably about 30 minutes since I sprayed it on. Let's see how it's going now. No, I don't, no, I don't want to be mean. It smells cheap. I don't like it. So let me know in the comments below if you like the Brooklyn Ellis perfumes, if there's one that you particularly enjoy, if you don't like them, tell me all about them because I want to give them a fair shake. But the two that I've smelled so far, I'm just not feeling it. I, I just can't. Just don't skip it. I say skip it. I'm going to i'm gonna give the other fragrances a chance i'm gonna give them a shot and we'll see if there are any other ellis brooklyn fragrances that i like but sometimes there's just some fragrances that you can't mess with that you just don't that aren't for you this may smell amazing on somebody else anyway sugar that is it thank you so much for joining me again if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do and i know you like the video we had fun because you stuck around this long so you should probably like it if you haven't already and then make sure you comment down below and let me know if there's any other perfumes that you'd like for me to review anything that you'd like for me to try out and and maybe give you my opinion on before you go out and spend your hard-earned money on it because not smelling bad is very important smelling good that's a thing that's what we want to do we want to smell good right right so i will see you sugar in the next video bye